this leads me on to my show for tonight. I'm going to be joined by Anne Ella, who has been a guest on the show previously, and uh, well, she was last year back in July, and she's going to be back for part two, and we're going to be talking about Planet X, which is um, something I've been talking about uh, for, for the month of September. I had a show... My last show was with Andy Lloyd, and we talked about Planet X in that show. So this is a, a continuation because, you know, all you have to do is just type Planet X into you know, the Google search at the moment, and there's just so much information um, going on about Planet X, and YouTube is just full of images and, fil- and, and you know, short clips, people catching images of things and not sure what they're seeing. So we're going to try to... Um, you know, go through all of these details and see what is going on. Um, and is is uh, is basically um, an expert at at uh, Planet X. So, um, if you have any, I you know, questions. If you have any concerns, she's got great information. Um, I don't hear very many people talking about Planet X in the way that she talks about Planet X. So. Um, you know, it's going to be a very, very interesting show tonight, so please do stay tuned. But we're going to take a quick break, and when I return, I'll have Anne on the line. So we're back here with me, your host, Valentine St. Auburn, and you are listening to Esoteric Discussions. And we are here live this evening. It's a Wednesday night, 21st of September, 2011. And um, this evening, I'm going to be joined by Anne Ella, who's been a guest, as I said previously, on the show. And she's back for part two. Unfortunately, when we had the, the first interview, because she's had such a colorful life, um, you, we went through all the, the experiences that she had working for Dr. J. Allen Hynek and, you know, just her, just her past in general. And we basically ran out of time to really begin to talk about Planet X very seriously. So um, we definitely have time tonight to carry on with the interview and pick up where we left off. So just to refresh your memory, Anne is the author of a book called Dragon in the Sky, which is available. Um, And it's a very nice book, very interesting, and uh, it talks about her her past experiences working with Dr. J. Allen Hynek and also her insights on Planet X. Um, And... uh, and also uh, worked previously um, as a White House aide and as a nurse. She's had a long life and she's done many, many things. And, well, I think that's what life should be like anyway. You should live it to the full maximum and have many different kinds of experiences and meet lots of different types of people. And uh, so she's going to be joining us. I'm just going to open up a mic and make sure that she is with us. Anne, are you there? Yes, Valentine. Hello. Hi, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to the it's, show. It's so good to hear you. Well, voice. it's nice to be back with you, and I'm so disappointed. I was hoping to be there in person. I know. Uh, yeah. and, and we had to cancel that. So We did. We did. What that. I wanted mm-hmm. to do today was give your audience some of the specifics um, that I would have done if I had been there in person. Um, with the talk. Okay, but so well, let's just jump into it. Um, I mean, where we left off was we were we were just getting into to Planet X. So um, maybe you might want to just give a background um, as to the history of Planet X. I know a lot of people have come through it via um, Zachariah Sitchin. So right. um, let's let's uh, begin begin the discussion and let's. Uh, introduce um, how how do we know about Planet X? This is a missing planet that we have. In 1989, uh, I was told by my guide that I needed to read uh, Zachariah Sitchin's The Twelfth Planet, uh, that there was a very important message in it for me, and I had no idea what what it was all about, but it was about the ancient Sumerians that talked about this planet that they called Nibiru, and the race that's on the planet, uh, the Anunnaki, who actually had come to Earth um, hundreds of thousands of years ago looking for gold, and they tinkered around genetically with the life that was on Earth at that time and created Homo sapiens, who we, and that's who we are today. So the, the people that are on uh, Nibiru are our gods. They actually created us, and 
we call them the small G gods. This isn't the big G god, but we were made and created in their image. Um, it's this planet is called a brown dwarf, and it uh, travels along a very elongated sling orbit that goes way out beyond our solar system and then comes back around through it about every 3,600 years. And we happen to be living in the time that it has come back around. Um, it's called Planet X, Nibiru, the Destroyer, uh, the Red Star, Wormwood of the Bible, yes, and yeah. the Dragon. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the title of the book, uh, Dragon in the Sky, Prophecy from the Stars. And it's actually the electromagnetic pull and interplay between the Earth that is going to cause all of the uh, devastation that we're going to experience. Yeah, they first saw it uh, actually in, they first tracked it in 1983, and it was first seen without a telescope in 2003. And it's most visible now at sunset. You can find it at the, if you're looking at the sun, at the 4 or to 5 o'clock position on the right-hand lower side uh, in front of the sun. Um, and you might try that. And, and right now some very exciting things are happening if you're out looking because we have Venus is becoming larger and larger all the time in our sky because it's getting pushed closer and closer to us as Planet X comes forward. And we can see Venus now uh, at the left side of the sun, right at about the uh, about the nine o'clock position. And um, then we also have the dark twin planet, which is the dark twin of planet Earth, and usually always rode behind us in the orbit, so that we we never could see it. It's also been pushed out of its orbit and is being pushed toward us. And we can now see that in the west, right about dusk, if we look to the west, just about the time the sun's going down. So if you can get a good vantage point, you know, from a high place, you could be able to see the planet X or at least some of its complex. It's coming with a lot of moons and dust and boulders and mm -hmm. things like that in the tail. Big entourage of, of, of debris. Yeah, basically. there's a so there's a lot in the sky that you can see uh, right at the present time. Um, the the planet itself in size is about four times the diameter of the Earth and 23 times the mass, um, and it returns every 3,600 years. And when it passes us, it's not going to hit us. But when it passes us, it'll be about 14 million miles away. And that sounds like a lot, but when you're talking about huge cosmic bodies, that's not, not a far distance away. And then this huge tail that's coming along behind it um, wafts way out about another 5 million miles away from Planet X. And so we're going to get a lot of the trash that's in that tail as it goes by. Hmm. And when it comes by us, when it passes by us, it's going to cause the Earth to go into a pole shift, a 90-degree pole shift. It's going to fall over on its side, and it, during the course of about an hour, it will take. It'll fall over on its side. And then it will eventually right itself again and then and take up the rotation again. But we, we're, we're going to have to go through that whole process of mm -hmm. the, the earth slowing down and the wobble becoming very severe, just like a child's top mm -hmm. as it winds down. You know how it wobbles back and forth, and then eventually it just falls over. That's what, that's what we'll experience. And you can survive it, but there are things that need to be done. Uh, and you need to be doing them now and not wait because we're, we're in the 7 of 10 right now on a scale of 1 to 10. Yeah, this is what the Zetas use as, as um, being yeah. able to track the, the intensity of, of the actual pole shift. Is that correct? 
correct, mm-hmm. yes. And 10 is the pole shift. Mm-hmm. We've been in this 7 for at least nine months now, and they didn't anticipate that it would take this long. But what's happening is a lot of the big changes are starting. The Indonesia is sinking. Uh, Thailand is sinking. Pakistan, India, Philippines. So Japan is are, sinking as well. Is that, yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah? That's right. Uh-huh. So um, we're going to be in for a rocky road uh, between now and then. Uh, also, the South America is getting ready to make a turn and move. It's going to move to the west about 250 miles. And when after this shift, the North Pole will be off the coast of uh, Brazil, and the South Pole will be below India. And India is scheduled to go under the water, too. And, and uh, India, well, I know Pakistan were having really severe floods. Um, uh, my memory is failing me. I think it was either last year or, or in 2009 when they had all the rain and, and masses and masses of water were not you know, drying off the land properly and it was flooding um, that whole area there. Uh, so right. so was, are we beginning to already see, like in terms of India and Pakistan, going under? Is, is that what we are sort of experiencing yes, it's, now? Yes, it's sinking. It's mm-hmm. already beginning to sink. And they just had a large earthquake um, in the northern part of India um, near the Himalayas. And this is exactly where the tectonic plate is being pushed under the Himalayas. So it's forcing India down and it's pushing the Himalayas up. Okay. Um, and we'll be seeing a lot of that all over. But uh, when Japan is going to have a series of large earthquakes, and right after that, the New Madrid Fault in the UK need to be very alert because even within hours of that happening, you are going to have a tsunami. And that tsunami is going to be anywhere from 200 to 300 feet high. Um, And at the same time, uh, Wales and Scotland and Ireland are scheduled to lose 150 feet of elevation. So going under the water by 150 feet eventually, uh, England is only going to go under about 75 feet. But the, the importance here is that in the two years following the Earth, um, the pole shift, the ocean level is going to rise all over the planet and will be about 675 feet deeper or higher than it is now. So if if take Ireland, if Ireland is sinking 150 feet and then the ocean is rising 675 feet, that'll tell you how high you need to get in order to survive. And the first thing uh, that you folks need to do to, is to survive this tsunami. You need to get to the high ground. I did some research and tell me if I'm wrong here, but um, it looks like the um, you do have some high mountains um, in Wales and England and Scotland and Ireland. You do have places that are 3,000 feet up. Well, that's nice but, to uh, know. <laughs> I don't even know, to be honest. <laughs> well, the question is, yeah, where are they and yeah. can you get, well, can cold, you get yeah. up to the top of them? Yeah, you know, if yeah. there aren't any roads or paths or yeah. anything, you know, are they climbable? Um, but the um, in England and Wales, they're called the Marylands and the Hewitts. Have you heard those words? No. Yeah. Well, they're, they, they, those are about 3,000 feet up. And Scotland uh, has the Marylands and the Monroes. It's a type of mountain, I guess, mm-hmm. depending upon its height. And uh, that, those are 3,000 feet up. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Ireland, they have the Sparren Mountains, the Glens of Antrion, and the Morney Mountains, I believe it's called. And there's anywhere from 1,700 feet to 3,400 feet. But right, okay. I, would, I would suggest, I would highly advise everyone from Ireland to leave. Ireland is going to take the brunt of this tsunami it's gonna, because it's going to be the first piece of land it's going to hit. 
And then as it washes over the U.K. and into Europe, as it goes, it progressively gets lower and lower. It's going to be, oh, what did I say, it's like a hundred and... About 150 feet tsunami going through the Irish Sea. And when it comes up uh, the, the Thames um, and by London there, it'll be about 100 feet. Wow. And it'll come crashing through. It's got a lot of force behind it. So it'll mm-hmm. take out some bridges and, and some buildings. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be my recommendation that the people of Ireland go to Europe and uh, go into the mountains of Europe. They would be much safer uh, there. If you can get in England, if you can get up to 3,000, if you can even get to 1,000 feet, you'll be able to survive this uh, tsunami. And the oil pipeline region up there in um, Aberdeen, you know, in Scotland, Mm -hmm, that's going to rupture when this tsunami comes through. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's it's got you got some things to think about. Well, we um, certainly have, yes. We, well, that's, that's when, a load of information that uh, that uh, we've started off with. Um, I just wanted to because there's going to be people listening, and some of them prob- probably don't even know anything about Planet X. So I wanted to just also pick up on some of the points that you just previously made before we move on with with more of sure. these details. Um, you know, when you're talking about this issue of a pole shift, you know, basically we're talking about you know the poles, the is the mag- magnetic poles, which is what we're talking about, aren't we? Um, the no, no, we're talking about magnetic and geographical. And Geographical poles shifting, so where the yes. north pole is, the south pole would be, and and vice versa. Um, now, in terms of um, historical, historically speaking, uh, let's go all the way back to to how you started off the interview, and you were talking about um, the Sumerians and what we know about Nibiru through Zechariah Sitchin, and also just there's other there's been other people as well that have put out this theory that um, our DNA have also has been tampered with. I mean, me personally, I, I got very much into von Danigan when I was much younger. That's how I came into a lot of this information. You know, you have the whole um, Mm -hmm. ancient astronaut theory. And and it makes complete sense to me. And even when you're talking about the gods and things like that, we tend to think that, you know, oh, well, it's mythology. It's not very real. But when you introduce this ancient astronaut type theory, it actually makes quite a lot of sense. And um, what seem to be stories really are just actual incidents handed down uh, through time but what we do know about the Nibiruans, um, there are there are descriptions of them as well, they're quite tall beings aren't they? Um, yes, they're, yes, and we thought of them as these, as these giant as gods giants, yes, yes. Uh-huh. yes, and um, you know, they came and they did what they did, they touched up our DNA and we can see that in the historical record because this is this is one of the things that have stunned or or, or um, made the um, scientific community quite confused is how did Homo sapien get quicker, faster, stronger than Neanderthal, than Cro-Magnum so quickly um, and, yeah. and to the point where Neanderthal and Cro-Magnum just disappeared and Homo sapien became the main species um, that overtook the Earth. They can't explain science, it. Science, yeah, science has always been looking for the missing link, missing link in yes. evolution That's from right. the apes. Well, we did not descend from the apes. That's right, yes. Um, we were totally interfered with. Mm-hmm. And it was, I like to call it an E.T. upgrade. Yeah. We, we were upgraded to Homo sapien, and this time the Zetas have come in and created a hybrid race. And I look at that as also another upgrade because they've been able to breed out our anger and our rage. Now, these are the, uh, good, tr- Z- these are the good Zetas, is that correct? Because there's yes, different these kinds are the good, of Zetas, the, aren't there? These are the good Zetas, yes. They're, you know, just like in any civilization, you've got your good guys and your bad guys. But you've also got the government here and the military here that have cloned um, these um, programmable life forms that look like the greys from Zeta. And they've used those for a lot of the very um, 
scary, frightening abductions and for the cattle mutilizations and to increase the fear among people uh, for aliens because they were going to, they're planning an alien invasion and they wanted us to be terrified. Well, the opposite has happened because we're, we're learning that these are very benevolent. The real ETs are very benevolent, much more advanced than we are, and there's absolutely no reason to be afraid of them, and they would never invade. They've been here forever. You know, if they had wanted to invade, they could have they done it have a done long it. time. They can do it at any yeah. time, can't they? Yeah. yeah. So would you say that um, the, the Zetas, uh, the, well, the, you know, the little gray guy with the dark eyes, that, that image that so many people are aware of, that Whitley Strieber, for example, talked about, would you say that um, he encountered one of those robotic-type grays? Um, I, don't, I don't know, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's very possible because our government has been involved with cloning, this, cloning these, um, well, they're like... Uh, robots, mm -hmm. sort of, yeah. um, since the, the 40s and the 50s. And you know, the first abduction, um, Betty and Barney Hill, we didn't hear about that until the early 60s. So they certainly had plenty of time to clone a bunch of these. And they plan to use them in this alien invasion. Well, the ETs are not going to allow this invasion to happen. I was so about we don't to say, to... yeah, do you think it's going to happen? Because everybody keeps talking no. about, but do you think it's, it's going to have to be postponed or it's, it's just not going to happen? It's just not going to happen. The ETs aren't going to permit it right. to happen because they've worked too hard with us uh, subconsciously um, for our acceptance. They've been talking to us in our sleep and communicating with us, and and we finally have wonderful uh, feelings and recognition for the ETs, and the greater percentage of people uh, have good feelings about them and are not afraid of them. And I don't know where the fear level is now, but it's gotten down to a very uh, acceptable level that they will be able to interact with us and land in the next couple of years. I think, you know, I think you have a very good point, a very valid point, because I've noticed over the years, you know, there's been so many um, alien-type movies that have been out there, and I've noticed as um, over the... There's, there's been a few movies here and there where they change up the um, the attitude of the the people interacting, you know, with these aliens that are coming in. For example, I saw Steven Spielberg's latest movie, Super 8, and that was about a being that came here and he got stuck here. And, of course, you know, you had these black ops doing these experiments on him and he wasn't happy about it, so he was quite angry. But he didn't really want to hurt people, but he wanted to go home. And you had the mm -hmm. children um, feeling for, for this for this alien um, individual. And, uh, you know, he did eventually get to go home. So there is, I have noticed a slight shift movement um, within, you know, the creative industry. I haven't seen that you know, one. I'll, yeah. I'm anxious to see that, yeah. Yeah, well, I always like to keep my eye on Spielberg and <laughs> what he's up to. Yes, yeah, so he's definitely <laughs> plugged in. Yeah, he's just plugged <laughs> in, definitely. But, um, he's one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah, he is, yeah. Um, but I also just wanted to pick up, because I don't want to move too far away from what we're talking about, because I don't want to run out of time, because uh, we probably need another show, to be honest with you, to, to talk <laughs> about all these details. But I also wanted to just pick up as well, when you were talking about um, the name of, the other names of Nibiru, as you as you rightly quoted, it's known as Wormwood, for example, this, this great um, comet that's supposed to come back in the Book of Revelations, um, that's quite devastating and also the Egyptians knew it as the destroyer and I believe there's this um, idea which we get through the Colbrin Bible um, I'm not sure if you've come across those texts, the, those ancient texts and they talk about um, uh, the Egyptian stories of this red planet or, or, or mm -hmm. something that's in the sky and they actually uh, related to the, the, the plagues that Egypt were experiencing. Because there is this iron oxide dust that is shrouding the planet and is very thick in its tail. And there will soon come a time when we will find this red dust 
falling on everything here as we start getting hit more and more by that tail. I want I wanted to mention before I forget it that uh, the about the red uh kachina and the oh, blue yes, kachina. Oh yes, yes, the Hopi prophecy, yes, please. Yeah, it's the Hopi prophecy that first would come the blue kachina, which would be uh, a heavenly body in our skies. And that would herald the event of the destroyer, mm -hmm. the red kachina that would come at, right after it. Well, they were trying to paint Elenin, the comet Elenin, mm -hmm. as the blue kachina. And that was total, total disinformation. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's gone now. It's, it's uh, it broken up. It has it, yeah? Okay. Well, it's broken up, yeah. but it never, never was a threat to the Earth. It's never. quite small, but isn't it? it you know, to, yes, to it's very small. And it was NASA's way of covering up again and trying to explain some of the things that we're going to experience very soon. Uh, and they didn't want... They, they couldn't say it's Nibiru because for 37 years they've told us that Nibiru doesn't exist. So they had to find something else to blame it on. So they picked on this little element. Now you watch the news because they'll be coming out with something else again here pretty quick because Elenin didn't work. Mm -hmm. But the blue kachina is the dark, um, the dark star, the twin, the dark twin of Earth. And you can now see it in the west um, at sunset or at dusk. And it give, it's giving off a bluish-purple color and sometimes some yellow mixed in with it. This is the blue kachina of the Hopi prophecy. See, so thought, it's here, and we, okay. and we are on. seeing it. Okay. okay? So right after this now comes the red kachina, which is planet X. And... And it's here. Honest to God, it's here. I wish I could say it wasn't, but um, we're taking pictures of it. We've gotten great pictures of it. You can go online. Go to ZetaTalk.com and look at those photos. Um, go also to Pole Shift hyphen Ning, N I N G dot com. And, and that'll keep you up to date on a daily basis. Check both of those websites, and you can get a lot more information. But we have the blue kachina, we have the red kachina here now, so the Hopi prophecy and all the prophecies are, being, um, are, are coming out right now. The mm -hmm. Mayan prophecy, mm -hmm. you know, um, Carlos Barrios said we're living in the most important era of the Mayan calendars and prophecies. Mm -hmm. All the prophecies of the world, all the traditions are converging now, and there is no time for games. And um, I just had another thought, and of course it just left mm. me. No, too, but it's but a very good point that you've just made. We are in very important times, and I wanted to have a discussion about that with you because I know things from an astrological point of view. Um, I know you missed uh, a bit of the introduction at the beginning of the show, but I was just talking about what is going on with, with the heavenly bodies up there above us, and I was talking about Pluto and Capricorn, the, the sign of Capricorn, which is an Earth sign, and Capricorn rules all of our structures, and Pluto is, you know, Lord of the Underworld, and when he moves through a sign like Capricorn, he basically will erode those structures. So when you talk about something like Planet X coming through, it really actually fits in so well with the astrology that we know, with the mundane, with the mundane astrology, as they call it, world astrology. Um, because it's all, it sure does. It's all about the structures, and we have Pluto eroding, transforming, literally just taking the 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 floor from underneath everybody, um, and and that we will be seeing that as these Earth changes begin to intensify. Um, but I also just wanted to say as well, you you um, you gave the Zeta Talk website um, as a good uh, point of reference. Um, yeah. I've been I've been looking at that website, and they do actually have some very very good information. I have to say, and and they do have some very interesting images. So for anybody who's in doubt, is is because a lot of people do not think that Planet X exists. 
um, and they don't think that it's been found. And some of the arguments that are given, I've, I've heard people like Richard Hoagland say some th things like this, that if it was there, so many people would know about it because... Well, let, uh, me, let me tell you that this week you know. we just got some pictures from a gal in Stevenage, I saw England. those that you sent, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. your neighbor right there, yeah, yeah. and taken out in her garden, and she has definitely captured something around the sun looks very much like a planet um, we're I'm not positive what it is though we haven't gotten a positive confirmation on it yet but very interesting so tell the folks to get their cameras and get outside and start just start taking pictures so the best and time to see it is when it's sun sunset is that is that right yes yeah, sunrise, tried at the sun, sunrise or sunset so. okay yeah you know, the sun is now called a monster sun. It's yeah. twice as bright mm -hmm. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's reflecting off of planet X and its uh, complex that's coming. So it's just, it's just this huge, bright, blinding light in the sky now. So that's what's making it so difficult to see planet X. But it is there. It is absolutely there. Uh, and, and we will all be seeing it in the sky as big as a full moon. And when we see it like that, as big as a full moon, we, that's going to be the beginning of the last seven weeks. And I, I want to just mention that mm -hmm. um, because there are some markers people can look for. Mm -hmm. um, it starts, the last seven weeks starts with the uh, planet going into a very severe wobble where it leans way over to the left trying to get away from planet X and then it bounces back and goes way to the right. We're going to have uh, about a week and a half of that severe wobble and if you're experiencing some nausea and some dizziness and some uh, occasionally bumping into the furniture or the walls, that's because of the wobble that we're going through now. Well, I was about to say, so I had that just this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yes, I just it's got funny how yeah. it, it, it comes on and it doesn't usually last very long. Mm -hmm. And it'll go away. Everybody's experiencing that now. Well, when we go into the severe wobble, it, we'll really be experiencing that. And we'll be seeing Planet X as a full moon at that time. But eventually we're going to get to three days of darkness. The northern hemisphere will have three days of darkness because the Earth is bending way over the North Pole, way away from planet X to try and get away from it. And it's coming in from the sun. So it tips the Earth up enough that the northern hemisphere isn't getting any sun. So there's three days of darkness. And at that point you know there are 30 more days until the pole shift. Uh, there's one month from that time till the pole shift. And the shift is going to be 90 degrees, and it's going to happen in one hour. So that's going to be a really big jolt. And people need to be under the surface, below the surface of the earth, and boulders and things like that falling at that time. Uh, and have it open at both ends. So just a shallow trench with a top over it, uh, like a metal top over it. And that will, that will save you. You can even put bicycle helmet or football helmet on your head to, to protect yourself. So and then, yeah, then the earth is going to, it'll settle down then and it'll get quiet enough so that you can come out and then you'll start picking up the pieces. But <clears throat> you need to plan, and, and I'd like to talk about that, about survival. Okay. Um, yeah. be, because you can survive, and I think one of the, the most important thing to do is take care of your spiritual life first. Uh, make peace with your own God. Get yourself centered. Meditate. Get quiet. You have, um, all of us, have angels and spiritual guides around us, whether we believe in them or not. They're there, and they are pledged to help us through this time. So you need to get quiet and then follow your gut feeling. They'll be talking to you through emotions and through this, this intuition. And if you get a gut feeling that you need to move, move and don't wait. 
Um, I'm telling people now that it could be so close that it's not too soon to leave your jobs and find your safe place. On ZetaTalk.com, they have a section called Safe Locations, and you can go there and you can find out about where you're living, uh, what the situation is going to be. But in the U.K., you're going to have a big problem with water and sloshing, and I would just recommend any of you to get over to Europe and go to the high grounds, the, the high mountains of Spain or... Um, Kazakhstan is a good place. The Altai Mountains in Russia. Um, let's see. Because after the pole shift, Europe is going to be a series of islands itself. Right. So if anybody's got a boat or if you can build an ark, now would be the time to do it. So basically we're having another flood. <laughs> yeah. Just the like, interior. Just like the original, yeah. Yeah. The interior of South America is going to be fairly safe. Eastern Australia, Kazakhstan, the interior of Africa, and um, in the United States, Wyoming and northeast Montana, uh, and central Canada, the high grounds of central Canada, are a good place also. But anyway, take care spiritually. Tell your, your family your loved ones, how much you love them, and ask for forgiveness if need be. You need to stock up on food, water, and medical supplies. So it's about, getting, it's about getting right in the mind. And I guess, you know, there's many people I get contacted quite frequently. A lot of people are waking up. They're having awakenings. They're waking up to the other side of themselves. They're having kundalini awakenings, and their bodies are going through um, um, many changes, and they are feeling different. And I guess you could say that it's all tied into the times that we are in, as, as you said earlier. This is a very extraordinary period of time. We're at the end, astrologically speaking, we're at the end of a 26,000-year cycle. Um, and as, as you were saying earlier as well, there are prophecies as well that are all converging together. We have the Mayan calendar. So, um, yes, I mean, uh, it, it's not far-fetched to be of the understanding that with change, uh, and if you want the change, things are going to have to radically change. It's not just going to just click its finger and um, we wake up and we have a different world. Um, we're going to have to go through a, through a transformation. How do you feel about NASA with, their, um, with these reports that people are hearing, that they're telling employees to, to, to begin to get serious and, and get prepared for, for some things coming? Have you heard anything from your side about any of that? About employers saying this uh, at NASA, they're, they're telling their employees. Yes, yes, we yeah. have. <clears throat> yes, they, uh, NASA is giving all kinds of instructions for the people that work. Do you think it's genuine? Do, do you think it's genuine? Are, yes, I do. Uh -huh. I think that is genuine. I think they're taking care of. They're trying to take care of their own. Mm -hmm. um, they're not giving the public any uh, any good information. It's all. It's all lies coming out of NASA, and it's all lies coming out of the government. You can't yeah. believe anything that the officials tell you anymore. Yeah. Um, this is a, a situation where you're going to have to save yourself. Nobody else is going to come to your rescue, and you need to plan to live a camping life for at least the next two years. Um, so better get those tents out and... Uh, get cracking and find your safe place. Mm -hmm. You know, the other wonderful thing that is happening, and this is all wonderful, it's all good. Well, people want change, so here it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, and when we get through this, whether we get through it with our physical body or not, mm -hmm. whether we decide to go to a higher level uh, and leave our body here, a lot of us will decide to do that. But anyway, it's going to be great because the whole of humanity is going through a spiritual transformation now, and we're all being given the opportunity to be elevated and to go into the fourth and the fifth dimension, which life in those dimensions is such a far cry from the third dimension. It's wonderful. There, There's no sickness or much less illness, and... Uh, 
people are loving and kind. There's no war. It, it's a wonderful thing that we're going to. So there is going to be a golden age, but we have to get through this uh, to get to that. Okay. Um, um, Yep. Well, are we that, out of time? We are. Well, that's an excellent way to, to leave it for now. We're going to have to have you back again. <laughs> because well, we, I'd be glad to, <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> um, we, we really didn't get to talk about Comet Ellen and Popley and then all those other things. But Just um, don't pay any attention yeah. to Comet Ellen. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so um, we're going to love you and leave you. And I want to thank you, Anne, for coming on the show tonight. Um, and your website, do you want to just quickly say your website? It's Anne, A-N-N-L-E-R, E-L-L-E-R dot com. And I have a, a video up there uh, that explains all of this so they could go and find out a lot more. Right, so that's the end of the show, guys. Um, it's been a good one. Until then, keep your eye.